All right. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Monetizing Your Mental Capital. I'm your host, Will Christensen. This is sponsored by Seller Labs. Diana, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So Diana Hirschman is here. And Diana, you and I have known each other for almost, it's been a little over a year now, I think, right? I think so, yeah. Time yeah. flies. Yeah, kind of crazy to see the time fly. And I've watched Diana be involved in lots of different things. One being AMZ United, which is a show that happens generally in August. It's going on its second year now, and it's bigger than it was last year. And it's specifically for wholesalers, right? Yep. The, all the sellers that are not creating their own item to sell on Amazon. They're supplying the demand. Resellers. resellers beautiful. And, and I remember, so this is actually a moment where I remember the monetization of mental capital happening. And I actually got to witness it. So we're at the Prosper show, not last year, but the year before. So 2023. And we're, I'm sitting down next to these guys. We were like all exhausted. Like we're tired just sitting down because, you know, sit, and we're like over by the wall or whatever. And Diana was there and they were talking to Scott Needham and James McDonald. And they were like, it really needs to be a show. Like spoke specifically for for resellers and you tell how, how did where did was is that the place where you just started talking about it and then like six months later you had a show that you were doing poor scott we, i was actually on scott's podcast yesterday and we were rehashing the same conversation i'm so glad that there were witnesses because it was you as a witness and abe was there but essentially you know i'm a loud mouth and i have opinions and i will tell you all my opinions even if you don't ask for them yeah and so we were walking and we it was me and james we were just walking the aisles at that point because yeah yeah coming around talking to people yeah and scott was there and we stopped to speak with scott and scott asked he's like what do you think of the show and i'm like well there's so many funding options here <laughs> It's going to be fun to watch what happens when the money runs out. <laughs> I am an ass. I'm, I, I apologize. <laughs> but it's true because I knew that money is going to get expensive. I took all the money I could take when it was cheaper. And at that point, that Prosper money was already more expensive. It was double digits. I was like, I'm not paying double digits, like single digits. That's where we like to be. But so we started that conversation. And I was like, this isn't home. And Scott is like, this is not home. And we just got into this conversation that Prosper, even though we come, and technically mm -hmm. I have no real reason to be there except to hang out. Let's just be yeah. honest. You know yeah. I, mean? I mean, you, you probably network with some people that could eventually become service clients. Absolutely. And the year before that I was there, when I was opening up my 3PL to the public, and I had a purpose. But that time, there was no real purpose. It was just for fun. And this year was more for fun. There was really no work element involved but and poor scott asked the question and i unloaded and we started the conversation and scott and i were just discussing this scott was like you think we could get 200 people and i was just so blown away by that because i was like i have 200 sellers in my phone like we can do this if 200 is all you're asking for scott let's go and scott was hesitant in the beginning but then he just sort of saw it and it was march prosper floor august 31st we had a show I, I remember, I like, I remember we were talking about it and, and I jumped, I was talking to Scott and, and I was like, so you guys need speakers? And he was like, talk to James. And and so I came and spoke and, and we talked about data and then data analysis and all sorts of stuff. I, I think it's been super fun to watch you guys because in that moment, we literally went from a concept to a monetization of that concept and how well it did in terms of paying for itself or losing money or whatever else. Like we broke like, even. We broke did even. Good. Okay. For the first okay. show, that's pretty For darn good. For the first good. show, I know. For the first show, that's pretty darn good. And, and mm -hmm. I remember, you know, it had its own kinks and things that were there. But the thing that I remember the most was every seller I talked to, I, you know, I'd stop and say, So what'd you think? And they're like, Oh my gosh, like this was, I've never seen a show that addressed me in this way. And so I was like, Wow, you, there really is a niche here to be had in terms of monetization of mental capital and growing that. And so this year we're going back and it's even bigger. We are working on being bigger. There's definitely going to be more vendors. I'm in charge of the vendors, which, and I think that one of the things that really helped this whole thing to be executed the way it was, we're all adults, you know, 
Partnerships are hard. Let's just be honest about it up front. Partnerships sometimes have a whole new meaning to patients. But Scott takes care of a very vital part of the show. I take care of another vital part of the show. James takes care of the third and Michael takes care of the fourth. And together we really lean onto each other's skill sets. And I took on vendors, quite honestly, just because prior year I was in another show and I was behind a booth and they did not do a great job to catering to vendors. And I'm like, people pay so much money for the exposure to talk to people, to be there. So mm-hmm. I was like, I'm mm-hmm. going to take care of this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get. I'm going to make that a good experience. For the vendors. Yeah. And you know, you saw where the vendors were. They were mm-hmm. in the middle of it. You yeah. can't miss them. You can't ignore them. You can't avoid yeah, you them. Can't, you, there was no way to actually walk around with them. You had to walk through them to get to the stage where yep. people were talking. And then the other, from the, the interesting thing about that was your other meeting rooms where they have the smaller breakouts, you had to walk back through the vendors. So like they were like literally right in the middle. Yeah. And I wanted that. I want that for me. So I want them to have it. And it's it's fair because Honestly, I use most of those vendors. I need them. If I need them, they need them. We're the same person. Do you know what I mean? It's just, I have been around the Amazon blog for the last two decades. I am old and I don't behave like that. Um, I'm 12. Let's just be realistic. If I need them, they need them. Do we need funding? Yes, but we don't need 15 funding options. And we need a funding option that understands us as a reseller. Do we need software? Yes, we need software. But is listing optimization... And keywording and SEO, what we're after? No, it's absolutely very much not the thing that we focus on. Well, you can't as much, right? Because many of those listings are under the control of someone else. Or if you did try to submit a change, it's going to get overwritten anyway. There you go. But there is that element where a lot of the wholesale sellers do create their own brands. There's bundling. There is an element where eventually... They're like, ooh, the other yeah, side. Yeah, that could be cool. valuable at that point. Yeah. 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 And the other side has cool toys and cool shows and lots of speakers talking about all these things. So, you know, it's appealing. And some people do venture to the dark side. A lot of people hold trademarks. But it's not the same way. It's not Venture to the dark side. I love it. <laughs> so, all right. We got to shift back here because yes. I didn't ask you that initial question. And I think you've done a good job of helping people understand why they would want to listen or hear from you. But tell me a little bit about your background. What do you have to say on monetizing mental capital based on your credentials that maybe somebody else wouldn't? As I mentioned, I've been in the Amazon space. And believe me, I did not intend to be here this long. Trust me. In my life plans, you know, you plan, God laughs. I was supposed to be in academia, supposed to be teaching. I was supposed to have a comfortable, cushy job and no worries in the world. Instead, I have been an Amazon seller for two decades. Kind of not easy, not calm, but I love the chaos and I can't get rid of the chaos. So I've been here. Mm. But as you stay in one place long enough, it gets boring and I get bored easy. So I've explored all the avenues that you can move forward and Amazon is adapt or die. There is no in between. Yeah. No, you're, I hear you there. Everybody was using the pivot in the COVID years. I have been pivoting since it was cool. Um, In the early 2000s, all we had was self fill. There was no FBI, right? And Mm. then FBI came. So I had to change from having to build out this operational structure to accommodate FBA. It, at that point, that was in my business. I was working for somebody. But then when I left, I had to figure out and restructure all these things. But by the time I left, the recession was over. And we've entered into the time of PL becoming more of a thing. And I saw the rise of that. 2012, 2013, throw anything on Amazon, it would sell. Mm. You know, the ads thing, there was no ad campaign platform. It was just yeah, they you hadn't, know, they hadn't made it up yet. Yeah, They hadn't learned to print money in that way. Exactly. And I saw the progression of Amazon. And I remember in like 2007 or 2008, when like the dot and the echo came out, and I was like, Amazon wants to build an ecosystem. They don't care about anything else. They just want this in this bubble. And they want to trap us in this bubble. And I'm like, 
how do I keep the bubble for money? <laughs> Yeah. How do, how do I, I, how, how, do do I, I keep, how do I monetize this part yeah, of the how bubble? How do I keep this bubble? Like, you know, how do I fit into this bubble? Bubbles is a circular thing. There's no corners to hide in. And I was like, oh, I'll roll it then. So I've been rolling with it. And there has been change after change, right? Mm. I have my own 3BL facility. Why did that show up? Out of need. I built one for myself. Now I have capacity. It's easier for me to offer that. Yeah, um, to, to help other people with that. So tell me, tell me, when is the first time? So this is one of the one of the next questions I like to ask. When is the first time you can remember monetizing mental capital? So like go back even to childhood. Like I've had some people be like, lemonade stand. I remember going out, I remember selling candy bars out of my locker at school, like all sorts of different answers that I have heard. And I've been really curious about this one for you. You're gonna like this one. So my mother likes to tell this story. My parents are immigrant parents from the former USSR, right? So what's important to them? Education. That's it. Mm. If I had to graduate college, that piece of paper that is still in my maiden name, I had to get, otherwise the world would end. But at the time I was already doing Amazon, I was like, I make month what they're offering me in a year. And she's like, I don't care, you still need to finish. She's like, I know that this is what you're going to do. I know that this is something you're going to excel in. And she likes to tell the story about how Back in the USSR, there were flea markets. And what would happen is if you had relatives overseas or if your parents would travel overseas, they would bring you all of these non-traditional things, you know, like bubble gum. And I had a good friend whose father would travel and he would bring back bubble gum. And the bubble gum at that time, mind you, we're talking like 80s, early 90s, mm -hmm. had the, the turbo bubble gum and the Barbie bubble gum with the stickers. And me and her would pull out the stickers and then we would be selling the gum because the sticker was on top, selling the gum without the sticker at this flea market by our house, what is now Ukraine. And my mother obviously didn't know this. This is not like- Oh, she didn't know that you were out selling it at the flea market. No. And I didn't know that she was out and about with my grandma. Oh boy. They walked by us. And when my mother caught me, she's like, this is not appropriate behavior. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You don't see nothing. And so that is my mother's favorite story. And there is a Russian word, basically translates into arbitrager, but it's not a compliment per se. Ah, uh, got it. And so for a very long time in the beginning of all of this, People would ask me what I do, and I would just make a joke, whatever. I'm, I, and I sell things on the flea market known as Amazon, something along those lines. And my husband is in the finance industry. And so whenever somebody would ask him, he would just tell him this just to get a reaction. And I'm like, oh, I hate you all. It's basically the same, you know, condescending annotation that says your little Amazon store. And so that is my mother's story. And she still pretty much will call it my little Amazon store that what I do now, 20 years later. Interesting. So, so I was, it I was, all started with bubble gum. It all started with bubble gum. So tell me what made you realize that you could take the bubble gum and sell it at the flea market? I filled the supply for the demand. There well, was yeah, but no, how did you realize there was demand? There was no bubble gum. Oh. And I had bubble gum, but I didn't want the bubble gum. I only wanted the sticker. <laughs> so, Think about this. Eight, seven, seven, six, seven-year-old Diana does not, like, has all this entire box of bubble gum, right? She doesn't want to eat all the bubble gum, but she wants to collect all the stickers. But what do you do with the bubble gum? You sell the bubble gum to get more stickers. So you saw a resource you had at hand, and you were like, other people want this because it's bubble gum. get it. And you can't get it here. So I'm going to go put it in a market, find a market to sell it on and, and connect those dots. Okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So, there was a barrel that would be selling beer and grandma's selling their wares and me and my little friend selling all of them. You and your friends. Selling, but I love that your mom like found you. Oh, like, ooh, she was not happy. <laughs> she was not happy. So Fast forward a little bit. 
when's the next time you can remember monetizing mental capital such bad memory but like i'm just i've always been a salesperson i've always seen the opportunity like even in college when i was you know picking what i wanted to do with life most of the time i would just be selling my teachers on the idea of how genius I am and trying very hard not to do the work. There were a lot of classes where I would be the TA and so I wouldn't have to do the work. Imagine having a TA who didn't take the class yet or did the work, but I would convince them that like, I'd just be their assistant and I'd help them. But you know, now I'm so busy helping you. Do I really have to take this stuff? Do I really have to do this lab? So <laughs> my you figured out you figured out how to sell your wealth, sell your way through college by, by convincing them that you didn't need to dig in that way. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I've, I've always been like, how do I get from point A to point B and do it some way that somebody else does the work? It's just, I have an allergy to work. I do a shit ton of work, but I enjoy all the work that I do now, but it took many years to get here. But I am allergic to sitting there and digging through Excel sheets. I spent years doing that, like mm. so many years. Can I do a new lookup formula? Absolutely. But I know people that can do it a lot quicker than me and I'll smile and ask nicely and they will. Or I will have somebody train the VAs who cost a lot less than my time right now to take care of it. There's always a way if there's a will. You know what I mean? Oh, I've heard that one before. Where there's right. a will, there's a way. I've heard that once or twice. There you go. So my curiosity at this, as you continued forward and had, you know, all of these different opportunities, imagining that I'm an Amazon seller and all I've ever done really is focus on my sales and kind of connect those different dots. If that's the case, can you tell me, what would you say if I said, hey, I'm going to go out and you know, start a service-based business? What would be the... Imagine. I actually hmm? just have to imagine. So up until 21, which is right as COVID was doing the disappearing act or we were ignoring it, whichever way when I look at it. Mm -hmm. Until that point, I was the operator. I was too busy. I had blinders on. Like I was like, shit gets done. Must do shit. Must do things. Must do this. Must do that. Buy it, sell it, find another supplier, go to a trade show. I was not a one-man show, but I behaved in a way that like the weight of all of the Amazon things were on me, the way of the real world was on. I had to get it all done. I didn't have time for marketing. Marketing was not a socializing with other Amazon sellers. That was not the atmosphere that I grew up in because during the early years, you would be in the room with the Amazon sellers. We would know each other's Amazon sellers. Mm -hmm. we, asking somebody their seller name was like taboo. They would not come up to you and tell you. They wouldn't, like, you know what I mean? Sometimes people, even today, they wouldn't tell you what they're selling. They tell you the category. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I, I sell uh, paper goods. But that would, like, that's as far as they'd go. Right. And so that whole gatekeeping situation, I was like, yeah, let's leave it, you know? And I fell into consulting because just the length of time I was there and I kept accomplishing things. So they were like, hey, can you help? Can you help? And so word of mouth, very small community. That's where I kind of made my, I could explain it well enough and I could show you how I did and maybe that will help you. I ended up doing the consulting. But then in 21, I kind of picked my head up and I was like, ooh, there's people that don't suck. They are willing to share information. You know what I mean? They will open up the door. They will tell you what they did. They tell you how they did it. They'll show you, you know, look at James. James is constantly posting the things he's seeing. James, mm -hmm. James helps just about anybody that asks and yeah. is not a ask whore. You know what I mean? Somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So James helped me survive many of the new instances, the so shipping, the low inventory fee. You know I'm curious, I mean? you, so you got into consulting and started doing the service-based thing alongside what you were doing on Amazon, almost by accident, it sounds like. Absolutely by accident. I didn't go, I, I didn't even know it was like a form of a profession. You know what I mean? The ignorance that I had helped me get where I am because I'm always like, well, what is that? 
And how do you do that? Wait, explain that better. And being Wait, young. Okay, dumb, hold on. So where does that curiosity come from? How do you nurture that sense of curiosity so that when, and how do you do it in such a way that it doesn't put people on guard or have issues with that? That's one of the things that I constantly am trying to instill in people. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Most of us have had these questions. Today we have Google. Today we have ChatGPT. Don't ask me how to make a shipment on Amazon. But if you're asking me how to optimize the shipment on the Amazon or how I optimize the shipment on the Amazon, I'll give you the roadmap. Th that's not a bad question to ask. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Am I going to make the shipment for you? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you about it. And if you could figure it out, you have to have a, enough ability, enough ambition to want to figure it out. It's not about the curiosity. It's about the ambition. Like, is the hard thing going to stop you? Because the hard thing never stopped me. The hard mm -hmm. thing was like challenge accepted. How do I break through this wall? How do I get to the other side of it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I never, never looked for somebody to pat me on the back and be like, oh, you did such a great job. I'm like, no, get out of my way. I got places to be, things to do. I want to retire like comfortably and not have to do that. And I want to make sure that my kids have a very comfortable lifestyle. You know, all of these things come out. I was like, I don't care if you think I'm stupid. Think I'm stupid, but help me. Like, and in the real world, it's old white men industry that I'm in. Mm. I'm female. That's definitely an advantage to a uh, younger male. But also I noticed with a lot of the younger males, there's a lot more ego where mm. it's like, you have to help me. No, they don't have to help you. They have to want to help you. And so if I'm nice to them, they're nice to me. What did they have to lose? You know, it's not like... I'm taking bread off their plate. Sometimes I'm just entertaining enough that they'll engage in the conversation. <laughs> you have to be a human being. I have a lot of varied interests. I could talk to the wall if you want me to, and I'll be totally okay with it. Like I can tell you about my redneck husband, who's a New Yorker, who is into hunting and guns and things from New York. And that opens up a whole different conversation. My husband proposed to me on a helicopter that whole conversation can take many different turns. I'm a New Yorker. So for me, there's no such a topic as taboo. You want to talk about, pick a topic. We'll talk about, it. I'll find yeah, a way. All to of the it. above. Yeah. Yeah. So you break down those social barriers by finding common ground. And then once you've broken down the social barrier and you become a human being to that other person, well, at that point, you know, asking for help comes pretty naturally. And you get the help that you're asking for. Right. The, the thing you have to remember is you also have to give. You can't just come and ask, ask, ask. You have to give. So you have to give something, whether it's entertainment, whether it's your time, whether it's a ride to the airport. <laughs> Interesting. I, so have you given a ride to the airport in exchange for advice kind of thing? Like, hey, why don't I give you a ride to the airport? And then you can kind of pick their brain while you're driving kind of thing? Absolutely. And I'm not, I, I don't mind driving because I live in my car pretty much. I've met my friends. I've picked up friends from JFK to go have really good Italian plate, uh, food at a place that I go to because it's next to JFK just to chat and catch up and figure out what's going on. And they are somebody who is very smart and they see things differently and I respect their perspective. So for me, I don't mind getting into a car, going to JFK, which is hell on earth, honestly. And now it's under construction, so just don't go there. And when you're coming for Ames United, do not go to JFK, go to Newark. It's not much mm -hmm. better, but it's at least not under construction right now. And I would go for lunch and just enjoy lunch, just enjoy the company and just have it. Most people would be like, oh, I'm not going to go to JFK just so that we could hang out for half an hour. Well, guess what? My friends now live all over the world. I will go to JFK, you know? And I'm very good about, if I don't like you, but I can't verbalize it, I just won't be around you. But if I like you, you instantly fall into the category of a friend. We, we skip that whole weird where we are. We're, you're my BFF now, we're done. Mm -hmm. And I will drive to JFK <laughs> or to yeah. another state, you know? Yeah. We think a lot of people are, oh, well, it's going to take time or... You know, this requires additional effort. When you think of it that way, 
Yeah. Everything is extra. So if I were someone who had a really hard time connecting with other people, if I were someone who had a really hard time understanding this whole law of reciprocity and figuring out how to connect those dots, what word of advice would you give me? I don't care what you're bad at. What are you good at? Lean mm. on that. Pick anything. And talk and, about yeah. it. Yeah. And it, you know what? You have nothing. You are an absolute shut-in. You have nothing to talk about. People love talking about themselves. Ask them questions. Keep asking them questions. Let them talk for two hours. They will feel like they're heard. They're appreciated. They just went on the best date ever because yeah. they got to share with you. And now yeah. there's one more human being in the world that understands them. And yeah. You didn't say anything. You just nodded your head. You said, wow, that's really interesting. That's amazing. Tell me more. So my favorite, when I'm networking, often one of the ways that I will tip that scale, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to deposit emotional capital with them so that at the end of the conversation, when I make an ask, they're like, oh, absolutely, I'm in. And so one of the ways that I'll do that is I'll just simply open up the conversation and say, who do you need to meet? Who are you, who are you here? And, and at a trade show, on a Zoom call, like I can open the conversation that way. Right. I, I can say, who do you need to meet? You know, oh hi, ha, you know, who are you? Who are you? Right. There's that like short, like, oh, I'm an Amazon seller. Oh, I'm a SaaS provider, blah, 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 blah. Immediately, if I open with, who do you need to meet? Who, you know, I I know a lot of people here. I'm gonna run into a lot of people over the next two days, or I'm on a Zoom call with you right now and I'm I do a lot of Zoom calls. Same exact situation. Who do you need to meet? And I found that if I open up that way, a lot of times people will open up about the challenges they're facing as well. Cause like, what's your biggest challenge? Like, why are you asking? Like there, there's all of a sudden this, like, I, I don't know, but who do you need to meet? For some reason, that's much more. Um, and so if I open that way, I found that they'll tell me, oh, I need to meet such and such or so-and-so. And I found that if at that moment I pull out my phone and say, hold on one second, let me shoot a text message. And, and even if it's not someone who's at the show, you know, if it's just someone I know or shoot a text message or an email and say, okay, now what do you need from them? And I'll text them right now and say, hey, do you know anybody who does X, Y, or Z? Or are you able to help with this situation? And then I say, cool, give me your number. And if they say they can help, I'll make a three-way text or I'll connect those different dots. What I found is at that point, they will often just turn around and ask me the same question. Who do you need to meet? And that opens up the door for all sorts of cool questions and opportunities and connections that way. So I love that question. Who do you need to meet? Okay. Right now? Who do you need to meet, Diana? I need three PLs to come exhibit at Ames United because I only have one. I need... So I have funding. I have account specialists. I would love a shipping software that's towards wholesalers. I know that's a big ask. With all the Amazon changes, that's a really big ask. Mm -hmm. All of that mess. So I'm not hopeful for that one. But a shipping, a shipping software, a shipping that, software. that has some solution for resellers. Yep. And you're looking to meet individuals who are owners of 3PLs or know people who are owners of 3PLs who might be interested in some additional clients. Yeah. And are not completely decimated. Totally booked changes. out forever. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Okay. I love it. I think those, I mean, you've identified some definite asks there. I can think of a couple of people in my network who may know of a 3PL like that. I know a guy who does his own 3PL stuff. I don't think he does it for anybody else. And I will definitely be reaching out to him after the podcast to introduce the two of you. I feel like that's, you know, that, that's part of the game we play, right? Right. I feel like me and you already have a couple of WhatsApp groups where we are together. Okay. That's my version of who do you need to meet? Oh, I'm just going to make a WhatsApp group. And most, a lot of the times mm. I get to ask but I'm like, you need to meet each other because I was talking to you and this is the thing you do. James and I have over 130 WhatsApp groups together with people. Whoa. Because, well, I work very closely with him. We're not an official sense of partners, but like we have 
massive resource share at this point, you know? Interesting. And and I have other people where we're catching up to almost like 80 groups together just because they're like, can you do this? I'm like, I can't, but they can. You know what I mean? But I know somebody who can. Absolutely. You got an email this week. I did. I was actually, I was thinking about that. I was like, you know, this has actually happened already. So Diana knows that one of my passions outside of Seller Labs is cloning entrepreneurs. I help them find young integrators in embryo or individuals who can really dive in and help them with the operations, expand, clone themselves, bandwidth for solopreneurs. And she sent a couple of people over to me and said, hey, you probably need to talk to Will because he's got that connected. And earlier today, the individual that she sent over to me was like, absolutely, and signed up. So it's, that's how you grow, right? Is you find people who know what you do, know what you do well, you build those relationships, keep them warm. And I will happily be sending a nice little check over to Diana for her help in connecting those thoughts. But that's not why she did it. She did it. And, and I actually am curious, you, did you even know that I pay? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, so and I, the only reason I pay is because it's a thank you, right? Thank you. You know, I, I want to thank you for helping me grow my business. And, and that's true of everything. Seller Labs, same thing. We have an affiliate program where we invite people to send people in and, and connect those thoughts. So that law of reciprocity is a really awesome game changer. And I am terrible with affiliate links, but I am great with talking to people, figuring out that they have this problem and I have the solution somewhere over there. And I'm a great negotiator. So like some certain service providers, I'm like, that's great. You can give me an affiliate link, but what I actually want from you is better service to mm. me. Yeah. And give me, people, give me a better account manager and I will send you more people. Right. And I have account managers in my WhatsApp that I'm like, I need this and it's done. And he's Love like, that. 65 people just showed, uh, just signed up. I'm like, congratulations. I'm busy. Love you. Bye. <laughs> and I love it. There, but the interesting things I, I have to tell you is most people don't actually know what I do, yet they still always send people my way. I okay. don't advertise any of the stuff that I do. Okay. You know I do James United with Scott and James and Michael, right? And I know that you have a 3PL. Right. And I know that you I, I know that you resell to some degree or another and have some of your own stuff there. And I know you actually, so this is kind of funny. If someone were to walk up to me and be like, I have a ginormous data weirdness. I got to figure out how to handle this catalog kind of problem. I'd send them to you. Like that's, if they mention the words catalog and problem and Amazon, I'm like, that's a Diana problem. That's right. But you don't actually know what I do with it. Right. I, you know, I don't. (laughs) Exactly. So it's interesting, but because I can't really do an elevator pitch about myself. I have 20 years of experience. There are very few people in the industry that know exactly what I do. And very recently, somebody asked them like, do you actually want to know? Because this is not one of those times. And I love that person. We sat through about two hours of talking at each other about what we do, how we do it. And I got to unload an entire story. And so they now know all the things that I do. But I also now know all the things that they do because they're a very dynamic person. And they've accomplished a lot in the real world, in the Amazon world, in the e-com world, and all of these things. So, so it hilarious does take- that, that you brought up an elevator pitch, because that's coming in just a minute. So be prepared. I'm going to ask you, you know, you stepped into an elevator and the guy next to you is like, yeah, I'm an Amazon seller. And you're going to have 60 seconds to describe what you do. So that, that's coming in a minute. But before we ask that question, I got to ask this one. Imagine that you could make a phone call back to you in college right? Back to that time when you were considering all the different things you could do. Obviously, this is long after the bubble gum. If you could make a a phone call back to that person, back to that young version of yourself in college, what would you tell them to do that might help them monetize their mental capital more effectively? You know, I don't have regrets. It's kind of screwed up. I kind of do the things that I want to do. Well, no less about regrets right? and more They're, about. I what? tell them anything, I change the path. 
the suffering the suffering is what got me here oh i've fallen flat on my face so many times you can't even imagine would i in that moment wish that i wasn't in the dirt absolutely fuck it hurts bad word sorry but i i'm resilient there is no taking away from that people that the shit that i've gone through just in this last year people would have like called it they would be like bye i'm done and i've seen so, people call it for less so, so would so, the advice you'd give is like this is going to be a tough road but it's worth it yeah just keep doing what you're doing just keep going you got it. Follow your gut. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't bother looking back. Everything will be fine. And you'll figure it out. James hates when I say you'll figure it out, but that's it. That's it for me. You'll figure it out. Whatever, you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. A good business has the symptom of generating money, right? And that's it. And that's where I'm, the money will come. You'll figure it out. Just keep doing the thing to keep building the thing just all right all right so now we're going to shift to that 60 second elevator pitch question so we're going to imagine that you stepped into an elevator and the guy next to you is an amazon seller and you've got 60 seconds to tell him he's like so what do you do and so you got 60 seconds to tell him right after that i'm going to ask you for any tips tricks hacks or books that you've come across in the last year that have helped you monetize your mental capital more effectively. Oh my God. You, so, you're making my brain think before it has to think. My mouth well, works. So, so much, no, so. no, I, I got that. I got that. So we're putting that question in the back of your mind, right? And and I'll mm -hmm. ask it again. So you don't have to remember it. Okay. 60 seconds, ready, set, go. Just step into um, that elevator. So I'm also an Amazon seller. What is your business model? I am a wholesale seller. I've always been a wholesale seller. I never got to do RA or OA. I would love to go treasure hunting if that's the thing you're doing. Oh, you're doing PL? That's so cool. SEO is really freaking complicated, but there are so many cool new tools that I didn't get to have when I was growing up in the space that you should like really look into this because with private label, the keyword is differentiation, but SEO is where I live. If you are wholesale like me, make sure your operations is operational and efficient and effective. So what do I actually do in all of this? I keep learning. I keep adjusting. I keep adapting. I keep filling my time with things that don't drain my soul. I've recently started the event for wholesale sellers. But if you are a PL seller, I'll see you at Prosper. 10 seconds. And that is so awesome that you have been on Amazon for fill in the blank and you are doing. And now we know why no one knows what you do because you just said all of these cool things about being a wholesale seller and knowing all of those different places and people are like, okay, well, I want to get to know her. So well done at, at increasing the mystique um, <laughs> and the conversation from that perspective. I'm Any, sorry. You're good. I no, have you're good. tried to do you're an good. elevator pitch and it doesn't work. I like it. I, I think you did well. I think you did well. <laughs> Tips, tricks, hacks, or books you've come across in the past year that have helped you monetize your mental capital. Tips. Make friends everywhere. Stop being an ass. Put your ego on a shelf. I don't care if you have a Rolex or a Timex or a Sega. It doesn't matter to me. The people that are impressed with the Rolex are not the people that are going to help you when you fall flat on your face. Mm. That's the biggest tip. Trick, take a speaking class, like public speaking class. I'm actually working with somebody right now. I don't know if you remember my speech, but it, last year, it was all over the place. Yeah, I like, remember. You actually it, asked me, you said, how did I do? And I said, honestly, I think you might've been a little nervous. And I gave you some feedback uh, yeah. that, that day. So you're in with a, a public speaking I'm, instructor I'm, or coach? They're helping me take all the crazy in my head. And there's a lot of crazy. We know this. And structure it. Because I cannot possibly in a 30-minute conversation impart everything. So I need to take a tiny little bit snippet. And I have to go Dissect with the it. linear thinking. Because I'm not a linear thinker. I'm like spiraling out of control at any given I love moment. it. I love it. So I just have to find my way back. And the person who I unloaded on what I do is the one helping me. And I love it. I could name names, right? Yeah. Uh, you do you know Oz Merchant? Yes. Oh, I love Oz. 
Right? Oz is my favorite people. Like, so I'm with Oz. Oz is going to think I, like, I have some sort of secret crush on him or something. You should. Oz actually, like, he's probably come up in 10 episodes <laughs> because of his name, mostly because, like, Oz merchant means bra- Oz means brave in Hebrew. So mm-hmm. he's literally his name means brave merchant. And I was like, how do you compete with that? Like how you, you don't, you just, you you're don't. Oz merchant. Yeah. So he's doing some I, cool I'm, stuff. And, and he is so helpful and so genuine and so amazing. And he has the new thing, the e-com headquarters, e-com, e-commerce HQ, e- e-commerce HQ. And everybody should go leave reviews because it helps others. Sometimes yep. you do the thing to help all the other people. Yep. And so, yeah, so he's helping me rein in this insanity that I'm unleashing on you. So, and, well, Diana, I love that because, so you just illustrated the point. Go be friends with everybody. Stop being an ass. Like, go lean in and, and put your ego on a shelf. I think you very eloquently showed that. And then you actually leaned in it and you're paying it forward as you describe, you know, your relationship with Oz. Like those who don't know Oz yet, who've listened to a couple of episodes, maybe this is the fifth time that they're like, okay, I got to go check out this Oz guy. Like that's, but the way he got talked about in that way is by being genuine, by being out there in the world. And that's, you know, the same for you. So. Oh, thank you. But, I love it. But, you know, I make friends with everybody. So like there, I go, I met people and I'm like, I let's go drink together and let's get to know each other and let's hang out. And the getting to know the person really does matter. Yeah. And like you said, sometimes you're not everybody's the best apple in the bunch, but there are a lot more good apples in there. And I know that like we chose it the profession of being an Amazon seller so that we could do it from behind the computer so that we don't have to interact with people, so that you know the introvert in us gets to be happy. Yeah. And I got to tell you, post show adrenaline high, that crash is a killer. I'm dead for days after these days. But in the moment, there is yeah. nothing better when you get to talk to all these people and you get to catch up and you get to figure it out and you get to make a new friend who sparks that 0.01% interest that you had in this thing that they just explained to you or I love it. Explained love it. better. Listen, yeah. me and you, like you said, I randomly called you. You educated me on things I just didn't know. Yeah. Did you think I love it. that I was an ignorant idiot? No, I just didn't know. Wasn't exposed to it. Then I think you've sunk the point well and truly home. You heard it. You know, go, go be friends with everyone. Connect with those around you and you'll figure it out. But be like, truly be a friend. Don't be a fake friend. Yeah. We, we can smell it. Like people smell that. You know what true. I mean? You get, you know, you'll get talked about you behind your back. I'll tell you to your face if <laughs> you're being fake, but like. If you're wondering if you're being fake, find Diana at the next conference and just ask her, am I being fake right now? And she'll <laughs> tell you straight to your face. Exactly. Exactly what that looks like. Thank you everyone for joining us on this episode of monetizing your mental capital. Thank you, Diana Gershman for joining us. Thank your you host, Will Christensen. Me. All right. Over and out.